Holy Spirit allowing us uh, to know God's love, to begin to understand that incalculable love of God, God's word, um, God is a demonstration too of that love. Um, it's often been called a love letter uh, to God's people, God's people everywhere for all time, uh, forever and ever. Thanks be to God. Amen. So, it takes two to tango. This phrase is often heard and, and often said, and, and typically uh, when it is said, it's referencing some sort of bad situation which takes at least two people to create, be it an affair, a uh, fight, uh, conspiracy. I've heard it before when I was a kid. Um, anyway, it takes two to tango. It entered our vocabulary following a 1982 speech by former President Ronald Reagan when he was speaking of the relationship between the United States of America and Russia. It takes two to tango. You can haunt any house by yourself, be a man or a mouse by yourself. You can act like a king on a throne. There are lots of things that you can do alone. You can sail on a ship by yourself, take a nap or a nip by yourself. You can get into debt on your own. There are lots of things that you can do alone. You can get very old by yourself, catch a fish or cold by yourself, dig a ditch or strike it rich all by yourself. There are lots of things that you can do alone. You can fight like a champ by yourself. You can lick any stamp by yourself. I'm uh, thankful they're sticky now. Uh, and you can be very brave on the phone. There are lots of things that you can do alone. But it takes two to tango, two to tango. Two to really get the feeling of romance. Two to tango. Two to tango. Do the dance of love. The dance. Uh, did you know that, indeed, uh, before Ronald Reagan said it, it was a song. A song uh, written by, uh, oh, I forget the name, Alan Hoffman and Dick Murray in 1952, uh, I believe, and, and made famous. I listened to it being sung by Ray Charles. Two to tango. But I want to ask the question, maybe it takes four to tango, four to do that dance of love. For God is love. Christ summons his bride, the church, to dance. And the Holy Spirit is at work leading us to the dance floor. One God, three persons, and humanity, and you. It takes four 
to tango, to live out that dance of love, that dance of life. It is Trinity Sunday, that Sunday for us to look at the mystery of our God, the one true God, eternal and everlasting, who, who was and is and is to come, the one who creates and redeems and sustains. And, and on this Trinity Sunday, we'll continue also to explore the mystery of the Holy Spirit, the one which has been deemed by Francis Chan the forgotten God, and I think he has good reason for his observation. But before we go any further, let us pause to pray. Almighty God, I come before you this day, Lord, in awe and wonder. I come to you this day longing for you to show up in big ways, to show up here in this sanctuary, to show up in the lives of those gathered to worship, to show up in my life, I come to you in awe and wonder of the mystery which you are, but even in that mystery, Lord, I'm thankful that you continue to reveal yourself more and more. And in this moment, I want to surrender to the Holy Spirit, to decrease that you might increase, to speak your words and your words alone. Holy Spirit, move in power. Speak in and to these people. Speak in and to me that you might speak through me or in spite of me. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations and desires of our hearts be pleasing to you. It's in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen and amen. So what's with the dance metaphor? I'm, I'm a ball player, not a dancer. Though I did discover uh, during my childhood and later in life that my mom wanted a daughter who danced. The pink uh, tutus and ballet slippers. Oops. <laughs> the dance metaphor. Well, there is a Greek word often used to describe the Trinity, a concept, uh, the Trinity, a concept which appears throughout all of Scripture, including in the beginning when the Spirit hovered over the deep and the dark. But the, but the word Trinity is never found in Scripture. But uh, early on, uh, the early church fathers, John of Damascus, is, is the one who is prominent, and they began to call the Trinity the Greek word is per perichoresis, and that word is formed by two other Greek words, the, the roots peri, which is, means around, and corin, and my friend, um, my Greek teacher, probably be cringing at my pronunciation, but these two words, uh, peri, meaning around, and, and corin, meaning make space. So perichoresis is, is God, the three in one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, around one another, together, yet making space for one another and making space for us, the bride of Christ, the church, making space for all of creation, for you and me. It takes four to tango, a dance which is often considered risque, a dance which goes against culture. That is a huge risk, and that risk might, and well, Jesus said, that risk will bring persecution. It might even cost you your life. It costs you to, to be different. A dance, too, that, requi that requires surrender. Surrender to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Surrender and allowing God to take the lead, in which I understand. Uh, when you try to dance and both people try to take the lead, it leaves, uh, it leaves stepped on feet and, and um, frustration and not, uh, not such a good and beautiful thing. It takes four to tango, requires surrender. It requires God to show you the way, the truth, and the life. For God to show you the, the, the way that he is calling us to live. It takes four to tango. Not the, the dance of romance, but the dance of, of love, which is agape love. Agape love is that love which calls us, calls us to serve and to sacrifice, to put the best interest of those around us in front of our own, to have the same mind as Christ Jesus, who humbled himself, even unto death, death on a cross. We are to also humble ourselves, even if it brings us to, to death. We're called to surrender. We're called to trust God, the three in one, Father, Son, Jesus, and Holy Spirit. We're called to trust that God will provide for us. It takes four to tango. 
the one true God who makes room for us, who made room for us while we were yet sinners, that calls us in to the perfect community where we're all ought to be looking out for the best interest of the other, where, where Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that is how uh, they create that community. No, not one of them is more powerful than the other. It takes four to tango, to, to dance that dance of love, service, and sacrifice. The tango, a dance of mystery, because we can never, and, and the dance we're invited in, because we can never fully know God, and yet we are fully known. We, we look at creation and, and we, we see God as creator. And as Psalm 8 tells us, that, that, that even though God is creator, the one who was and is and is to come, considers us just a little lower than the angels. And God in that, in that mystery, delivered us from sin and death making that ultimate sacrifice, the sacrifice which started with stepping out of heaven and then dying an excruciatingly painful and humbling death. It takes four to tango, a dance of beauty. Beauty even in the ugliness of the cross. Beauty in the tomb which only had uh, the grave clothes, Jesus having risen from the dead. Beauty in the relationship and, and the fact that he appeared to the disciples, to, to the women, beauty in the fact that, that he ascended into heaven because it was an advantage for him to go that, that the Holy Spirit might come and indeed be Jesus by our side at all times. Beauty in that sending. Beauty in God trusting us to invite others into that dance. Beauty in the wind and flames in every language being spoken. The Holy Spirit coming and empowering a ragtag bunch of disciples to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. Empowering Peter, who was, was it just a fisherman, to preach that good news. The, the beauty of, of God changing the heart of a terrorist, that's Paul, who was set on killing Christians to, to take his life, to take that gospel to faraway places with his voice, with those he trained, and with his letters, the mystery and the beauty of the dance, the mystery and the beauty of the surrender of the trust on, on that day where thousands of people repented and believed in Jesus, the beauty of the birth of the church, which does still exist, us, some 2,000 years later. It takes four to tango. And the words of, of songwriters Mark Daniel Sanders and Tia um, Sillers, again, you know, Katie's extraordinary playlist. I hope you never lose your sense of wonder. You get your fill to eat, but always keep that hunger. May you never take one single breath for granted. God forbid love ever leaves you empty-handed. I hope you still feel small when you stand beside the, beside the ocean. Whenever one door closes, I hope one more opens. Jesus would say, I know one more opens. Promise me that you'll give faith a fighting chance, and when you get the choice to sit it out or dance, I hope you dance. It takes four to tango. I hope you never fear those mountains in the distance, never settle for the path of least resistance. Living might mean taking chances, but they're worth taking. Loving might be a mistake, but it's worth making. Don't let some hell-bent heart leave you bitter. When you come close to selling out, reconsider. Give the heavens above more than just a passing glance. And when you get the choice to sit it out or dance, I hope you dance. I hope you dance. Don't fear those mountains in the distance because Jesus says by faith, the faith of a mustard seed, you can say, move, mountains, move. Don't settle for that path of least resistance because Jesus calls us to deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow him. Take the chance. Don't allow bitterness to set in. Pray for, your, pray for those who persecute you, love your enemies. And in that, Jesus calling us into that dance takes four to tango. Perichoresis, God the three in one, uh, around and making space in harmony, making space for a broken humanity to join. 
the, the humanity who chose to, to refuse all of God's goodness, to, to not trust uh, God with the goodness of the garden, with all that they needed, inviting us to be in that relationship with love, to find healing, to find freedom, to discover the victory over Satan. And I can't say it enough, that victory over sin and death, it's ours through God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who gave Jesus to be the ransom for our sin. And the Holy Spirit, and Jesus says, which will convict the world of sin, the sin of unbelief. And then again, the word believe in Greek is not just a knowledge, but it's also the actions of obedience to convince the world, to convince us of God's righteousness that is offered to us through Christ Jesus, that righteousness which, which we are called to, to be holy as the Lord is holy. The, the Holy Spirit to convince us of the truth and reality of God and of the coming judgment. People, it's real. The truth of, of the eternal choice that we're offered to choose eternity in heaven in the new creation or the eternity in hell where Jesus told us there would be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And that's where I want to deviate for just a moment to talk about that person of the Holy Spirit that, that Jesus sent when he went to the Father, the, the paraclete. And that word has been translated uh, as, as many different things, as an advocate. And there is a legal, a legal bent uh, to that word. And also as a comforter, but, but, um, but that has been said by the commentary, commentators to be a little bit, well, not strong enough. Uh, because because it, the, the paraclete is called, uh, the paraclete is also this idea of side by side, of, of a helper, of a, a strengthener, of the one who gives us the power to, to not sin, to not consciously sin. I recognized this morning when I opened my mouth and when I prayed that prayer of confession, I was like, oh, that's me. But I knew when I was opening my mouth, I wasn't saying nice things. The Holy Spirit, the strengthener, and the counselor, which, which doesn't necessarily mean the one that you go to therapy, uh, but, which therapy's okay, folks, um, but, but the one who, who is your legal aid, the one who is arguing your case, and the one who has taken uh, your, uh, the, the, the verdict and the penalty for your sin. But even more so, it's not just a legal rendering. One of the commentators says, it's a friend who does whatever is necessary to forward the best interests of their friend. But it's, he says, but it's impossible to find a word that, that will cover all of what the paraclete means, all of, of who Jesus was saying was coming uh, to be by our side. You all might have a friend where you just can't explain uh, what that friend means to you. There isn't the words to, 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 to offer. Um, and, and this is the Holy Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit who strengthens us to make good choices and, and right choices. And, and so my question is, though, and, and I'm just going to offer a little bit of, of, of more of, a, of some of my lament as it has been, is that, yes, uh, these pews are, are a little bit emptier than they were before COVID, but they were pretty empty during, uh, before, like, they were pretty empty before COVID. This place can seat 500 people, and I bet you there are 500 people out there that need Jesus. And so if you are here in terms of, of, of wanting to leave it and feel better, don't you want that for your neighbor? Don't you want that for your family? Don't you want that for the person that you stand behind in the grocery store? If you come here because you like the relationships you've formed, don't you think that there are people who, who feel alone that need uh, not just the relationship with Jesus, but, but the relationship with you? The, the question is, and then that includes me, this week there are three, four people I need to take the flyers to about Robo Willies and about the community event that live around my house. Don't you want your neighbors? Can't you, can't you look out for the best interest of those in your neighborhood who, who might indeed haven't chosen Christ, haven't chosen Christ to be redeemer, haven't come to understand a, a God who loves them with a love that is so big it cannot be calculated? The church is called to bring that message. 
the church isn't these walls. The church is you. What are we going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? What did you come today expecting? I think about, you know, I think about the idea of, of prayer. Prayer is the beginning of revival, not just in your own heart, but, but in communities. Are you praying for the church? Are you praying for your neighbors? I do want to, to offer this opportunity again. I'll get myself together enough to be in here at 815 if somebody wants to join me and pray through this sanctuary. Or stay a little bit later and pray through this sanctuary. Walk upstairs if you're able to and pray for, and 104, 104, and pray for all those that come into this building needing Jesus. And watch what God will do. John Wesley called it provenient grace, uh, the Holy Spirit going before uh, and bringing us to that place of conviction and convincing. God is the one at work. Won't we join him? And there are crickets. <laughs> and so next week, I'll get myself together and I'll be in here at 815 to pray. I invite you to join me. And you know what? <laughs> I might even be willing, there are ways to do conference calls, to wake up early or to stay up late if you're on that other end of the spectrum. And just to, just to make a call together and pray over the phone. Three minutes, five minutes. Are we expecting God to move in us and in this community, in this church? Again, I prayed this morning, God, I'm expecting you to show up. I have no idea how that will look or, or, or what I'll do. And that is going to be my promise for you all to be praying for you, to be praying for me. Because I was convicted after my sermon last week in terms of, of, of the choices I make, though I have the power of the Holy Spirit not to make them. I was convicted this week how I haven't allowed the, the Holy Spirit to, to, to create in me that fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, uh, generosity, and self-control. So, we have that helper side by side. We have that advocate pleading our case. And we have that friend in Jesus. We have that friend through God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who wants the absolute best for us. So will you allow yourself to be, to be being transformed into the image of Christ, meaning we too come alongside of others. We too become Jesus with, with skin on. I so want to have communion today and bring you all to the table. But, but no, that Christ is the center. And even if we differ in opinion, even if we struggle with one another, that Jesus is central in our relationship. And the Holy Spirit gives you power to come to the table, whether literally or figuratively, and to share the good news. So church, I pray that before you get here next Sunday, that you've invited people to row boat willies on Tuesday to worship. I also got frustrated this week in terms of the rain, and uh, not just God sending the rain, but, but some of the, well, it's going to rain, you know, like three hours before. And, and this idea of, of we sit at Camden Yards when they roll out the tarp and, and wait for uh, two, three hours for the ball game to, to start up again. Sometimes we sit in that light drizzle while they play. We sit in the freezing cold at, at the Ravens game. We make decisions every day that cause us discomfort. But when it comes to worshiping God, we want to be absolutely comfortable. The weather conditions have to be right. The time has to be right. We have to have nothing else in our schedule. And I know to a degree I'm preaching to the choir. You all are here today. But I, again, want to encourage us to pray for that awakening in ourselves where God's number one and that we care enough about everyone we come in contact with we bring them to come to know Christ. So uh, as, as we come to the, the place um, where we are going to, to affirm our faith, where we are going to stand and, and proclaim what we believe, I want you to allow those words to sink in. 
and to think about how you might offer it uh, to, to others, even maybe in your own house uh, and in your own community and in those that you might, uh, for those of you on Facebook, those that you might encounter in those places as well. So now, church, I, I invite you to stand and join as we affirm our faith using the uh, historic Apostles' Creed, um, and it is indeed printed in your bulletin. So I ask you, church, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died in his area, he descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of God the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. I invite you to remain standing and, and sing the song, Spirit of God, descend upon my heart, hymn number 500, and pray it as indeed a, a prayer and not just the words on the page.
words through for the songs. Um, it is more about does it fit and can we sing it? And uh, God always shows up in those songs in powerful ways. And so uh, receive this benediction. Again, it is a sending forth and not an ending to worship. Uh, may you this day go in grace and peace and go empowered by the Holy Spirit to be Christ's witnesses in your home to the world and everywhere in between. God, embold, go emboldened by the Holy Spirit to live a new life, a new and radically different life, a risky life, a life of peace and joy, a life of patience, kindness, goodness, generosity, and self-control. Go to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are loved by God with a love stretching beyond infinity. I tell my nephew, I love you to infinity and beyond beyond. Go in the confidence of that love. Go to be loved by God. Go to love God and to share God's love everywhere and to everyone. That by the power of the Holy Spirit, disciples of Jesus Christ will be made and this world will be transformed. There will be revival. Go in the name of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, I invite you to stay and pray, to walk the pews and pray that they'll be filled. And when you leave, put your thank you in our gratitude jar that we might receive grace and know the joy 